What's up everybody, JJ here, and this is the longer Ray 5, now with a brand new 10 watt module in it. And I feel like this is exactly what I was hoping for when I originally got the 5 watt module, but I was a little disappointed kind of with the output, with the speed, with the cutting capabilities. Now everything is twice as good because there's basically two of these little modules inside of here. There's some fancy mirrors in there that bounce two of those laser diodes into a single stream coming out the end and so you get amazing results out of it. So I've been really impressed with my testing this week. I feel like this is what I was hoping for. And not to say this original 5 watt laser was a bad laser. I think it's a 5 watt laser and most 5 watt lasers all perform very similarly. I would think I was just expecting more power out of it and this 10 watt laser really performs. Oh, also of note, Longer is doing a couple giveaways, so you might be able to win a free 10 watt machine. I will cover those details at the end of this video, and chapters will be down there so you can skip around and come back to whichever sections are more relevant for you. So specs of this, of course, it's a 10 watt laser module. As I said, it's two of these 5 watt modules inside of here and it's so easy to install. If you already have a 5 watt laser like this one, simply unplug this little plug up top, unscrew it on the back. It's the same as assembling it the first time. You unscrew it, pull it off, screw on the new one, plug in the new module, and boom, you're ready to go. Unlike a 3D printer where you would definitely need to change some firmware if you changed the heater or various parts of the 3D printer, you're gonna need to change firmware. With this, you don't need to change the firmware. When it comes to these modules, just about everything on here is bigger. The heat sink is bigger, this acrylic guard on the end is bigger, how you mount it is even a different depth. So they give you a different focusing distance little metal rod. But since I don't really love using these, I 3D printed out a different one. This is just a little plastic plate that is exactly 3.8 millimeters tall. That way, if I'm setting the laser on top of the material, I can slide this underneath, adjust these screws, and set it right down on top of that, tighten it down, then pull this out, and you're ready to go. I found this plate to just be a little bit easier. I will link it if anyone's interested, but you can just print out anything that's 3.8 millimeters tall will be your perfect focus distance. With the Ray 5, because the control board and power supply are beefy enough to be able to handle 5 watts or 10 watts, you're good to go. All you have to do is install the new one, and then when it tells the laser, give 100%, it just gives all the power it can give. Also, it is important to note that's 10 watts of output power. Some manufacturers will list their input wattage that goes to the laser, which is gonna be a lot bigger. So if you see laser modules that are 25 or 50 watt lasers, they're not outputting that much laser. I think the largest diode laser right now on the market is a 20 watt laser, and that combines four different lasers together into one. Most lasers are either one watt, five watt, or 10 watt on the market right now. Other things to note, this one does have a very fine focus spot. It says 0 0.06 by 0 0.06 millimeters. So you will get a square output laser. Some diode lasers out there don't output a perfect square. It's more of a rectangle. So you'll get more fine details if you cut either horizontally or vertically, depending on the laser. So this one should be fairly square. They also say that the laser focusing distance is 50 millimeters. So you should get a really long depth of cut is totally possible with this. They say up to 30 millimeters in acrylic and 20 millimeters in wood. And I have done that in wood. It did take several passes to get all the way through, but it is possible to get a very clean cut all the way through 20 millimeters of wood. And that is super cool and it's definitely got my mind turning of various ideas and projects I can now do with this. Now with this, it is the same machine system that came with the five watt laser. So I did make a full review of kind of setting it up and getting it working. I'll link that one as well. But a brief overview, I think this is a great machine. There's five big safety features they have covered here, which is I think great because lasers are fairly dangerous. If you get this in your eye, you could blind yourself almost immediately. Also with laser engraving, you're using a very powerful laser to cut into very flammable substances wood, paper, cardboard. Those are the things I mostly use and those can go up in a moment. So I do have a fire extinguisher always nearby, just in case, and always wear your glasses just in case these will protect your eyes from the laser. There is a nice cover here, but it only covers the front of the laser. So if you ever have it running, do wear your glasses. Your eyes are extremely important. Just make sure you take care of them. Another big selling point of this laser engraver over other ones is this nice touch screen on the front. Also the ability to load micro SD cards of G-code on here. That way you don't have to have a laptop 
right there, always plugged up to it. For me, I have this out in the garage. And I don't love having to take my laptop out there. With this, it feels very similar to a 3D printer where I would go to my computer, slice a bunch of G code, take out the SD card, load it in the printer, and then select which files I wanna run. This is the same way of I can have all these G code files on my SD card, take it out to the garage, plug it in, start it printing. Engraving, not printing. Force of habit, I'm way more used to 3D printers than engravers. Here's a comparison of the test files that I ran on both the 5 watt and the 10 watt laser. Exact same G code. Well, I did change the power output on the lettering around the 10 watt module. With the 10 watt module, you can really push some high speeds and get some great results out of it. With the 5 watt module, once you push those high speeds, you're gonna lose some of those details in the low end. Not as much dynamic range in your engraved pictures. This also shows that when it comes to cutting a single pass at 100%, at 100 millimeters per minute, you will cut through. And this is just some four millimeter super cheap Luan that I bought. I'm not sure exactly what kind of wood it is, but it's a just very cheap one that I picked up at a hardware store. This test file I did pick up from the Make or Break YouTube channel. Huge shout out to him for making all of this. He is way more of an expert at Lightburn and I've learned a lot from his channel. I will link his link to this test file down below and he does have a course explaining some of the things of Lightburn and how to get it working. Since he had such a good test file created, now you can compare this to ones he's done on his channel. Now when it comes to the materials you can cut with this, very similar to almost every other diode laser out there. Here's a list of most of the common ones. The big one that's always asked is, can you cut metal with this one? And you're not gonna be able to cut into metal, but if something is coated or painted metal, you will be able to etch into that and see the metal underneath. The other class of materials to mention is dangerous plastics. There's certain plastics you don't wanna be cutting with this because it is burning into it. So certain plastics, you don't wanna melt all that. It will just release a lot of nasty fumes. So unless you have some sort of enclosure and a filtration exhaust system set up, you don't wanna be doing that and breathing all those chemicals in. So when it comes to the downsides of this upgrade, <laughs> I think the biggest downside is how much power it has. 10 watts is a lot of power. And so I do think it needs an air assist and an enclosure, and those are the next two projects I'm currently working on for this printer. I currently have the 3D printers working on the parts for that enclosure I'm gonna build around it, and the parts have already been ordered for me to add an air assist. I think I get so much more charring since this is so much more powerful, it really starts more fires. So having an air assist to be able to put that out and really reduce that charring will really help. So now onto the giveaways of how you could win yourself an entire laser engraver from longer. The one that ends soonest is a Facebook giveaway. It ends July 15th. So coming up soon, there are some things you have to do. I will add a link down below. It says first, follow the longer 3D official Facebook account. Number two, repost their official post onto your feed. Number three, show your ideas in the comments about longer Ray 5 10 watt. And then on July 15th, they will select a random user and give away a free 10 watt laser engraver. The second giveaway will be all the way through the month of July. It's a YouTube giveaway. I will have their video linked down below. Go to that video, subscribe to Longer, like their video, and share an idea in their comments section. And at the end of July, the top two comments will receive a free 10 watt longer laser engraver. So those links are both in the description down below. Now when it comes to the price of this laser engraver, there are some promos going on right now and I'll try to keep it posted down below of how these things change because they're always telling me there's new coupon codes and stuff. First off, all the way through this month of July, if you buy the Ray 5 10 watt machine, you'll get the 5 watt module as well. It's a free module, you can attach it to a 3D printer or whatever else. I mean, I get you can't use two on the machine at the same time, but a free laser module, it's not a bad deal. Also, starting on the 1st of July, the first 100 customers to buy the Ray 5 10 watt machine will receive a newbie gift pack. They say it's worth $40. I'm not sure what's all in there. It might be their pack of beginning materials to engrave onto. That's super awesome and great to get started with. I feel like that was kind of the hardest part for me to begin with of I had to go out and try to find things. It's not like 3D printing where you buy a spool of PLA and you can print anything with that. Laser engraving, you actually have to find wood and leather and paper and cardboard and all these different things you wanna cut with it. Now, when it comes to the cost of this, I'm not sure what the price of just the module is, but they did tell me the price of the entire, if you buy the entire engraver with the 10 watt module, there is a promo going on from the 1st of July to the 15th of August, and it will be $460, but with the coupon, 
down below, it is $430. So after a week of testing, I think the question is, would I recommend the 5 watt laser or the 10 watt laser? And I think it really comes down to you and how you want to use it. If you're going for a lot of cutting, which I personally really enjoy, being able to engrave something and cut the outline around it, and then you've got this standalone part on thicker than the thinnest pieces of wood. If you're cutting veneers or a few millimeters, the 5 watt laser will work. The 10 watt will make it way easier if you want to cut things that are over a few millimeters. I think a lot of the decision between them comes down to your use case. If this is just a hobby thing, something you like to use for engraving things for yourself or for friends, the 5 watt laser I think will be fine. But if you're using this for a business where you're engraving things to make money, the 10 watt laser will double your output. You can engrave things in half the time. So I know if it was me, if I owned an engraving business, doubling your output might be a great idea and a great upgrade for you. But anyway, let me know if you have any more questions about the system, about the 10 watt laser module, or something maybe I forgot to mention in this video. Let's chat about it in the comments down below. And as always, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.